Ever since I was young, I loved adventure. I loved the idea of getting lost somewhere in a faraway land and not knowing what would happen next. In high school, some days I would jump on my bike and just ride across Los Angeles with no phone, no map, and no real idea of where I would end up. This urge to explore and get out got me to various countries from all over. A couple summers ago on Oahu, I decided to walk across the island from my home on the northeast side to downtown Honolulu in a day. It took many hours and I was so exhausted on my arrival. Yet, I gained a profound appreciation for the parts of the island I never noticed while being in a car driving by. That whole experience pushed me to want to do more adventures. So a year later, I got the idea that I had to visit the Philippines again. I had been there several times before on various trips, but never really got to know the land in the way I wanted to. And I knew the only way I could do that was on a piece of wood with four wheels. Many miles, we're finally here in Claveria. Lots of fishing boats, it's a small fishing town. This place is on the very, very top, north of Luzon. So this is where I'm gonna start the trip, and from here, skate all the way down, and just keep going. But luckily, today is one of the most pretty, most beautiful days I've ever experienced. It's hot, but it's not as hot as I expected. I don't know where he is going, but take care of him, okay? <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna skate from Claveria to Manila. That's, you know, insane. Just like that, I was on the road. The journey began and my dream had turned into reality. Going through this beautiful little friendly town was more than I could ask for. Seeing these green rolling hills and lush rice farms lined with coconut trees made me feel so relaxed. And just seeing such happy faces gave me hope in this killer heat. Hello! Welcome to Santa Proxedes. I found a stream on the side of the road. I was afraid of snakes, but it felt so good to just dip in. Just then, I sketched up a hill hanging on the back of this one champ's moto, but he had to get going. Yep, the rain came. So I decided to find shelter in an abandoned building on a cliff overlooking the ocean. This place had no roof, so I decided just to embrace getting soaked. Every abandoned building I've been in comes with a unique vibe. This one was interesting, almost nostalgic. Word on the street was this is one of Ferdinand Marcos's private vacation homes. He was a former president of the Philippines that was both hated and loved by the people. Either way, he left a huge impact on the country. So the rain cleared for a bit, and I carried on to this paradise. I came across the Patapat Viaduct, a 1.3 kilometer long coastal bridge that was completed in 1986. Besides passing by some friendly bridge enthusiasts, Hello, Kamusta? What's up? this whole area felt almost abandoned, peaceful, until I ran into some guys who wanted to try my board. Bro, are you, are you using WhatsApp? I swear, my board almost oh. got ran over. I finally made it to this little village in Pagodpo, right by the beach. <laughs> These kids ran over and asked to ride my board. <laughs> it was awesome to see them so excited about it, just to skate. They brought me to the beach to jump and do some backflips off a wall. I joined in and I still don't even remember how I had the energy to. I was still soaked and my legs felt like rubber bands. But a moment to be a kid again in a setting like this was the best way to end my first day. Okay, here 
grab some fresh malungay. This stuff will give you energy and strength to skate. It's pretty good, it's pretty healthy. Uh, you can just pick it up on the side of the road and you can take a bite. And just munch on it along the way. There's plenty of it. Mm. The more you experience the Philippines, the more you really experience life. Mabuhay literally means to live, and as I left Pagodbud en route to Luwag, I thought about how the people here really live by this. It's a simple life, and many consider it a poor one, but if you realize what you're living for, you discover it's all relative. And a lot of the time, the complexities we think are necessary blind us from the simplicities that bring us the most joy. It's amazing to see how much land is used to grow food. Agriculture is a huge part of the working culture and has been for centuries. But as time passes, farmers are beginning to age and that next generation may not be as interested in spending their days in the fields. Rise Up is an organization that empowers farmers by inspiring and educating youth through agricultural technology and innovation. Now all, all this area, we plant rice. When I'm little, I, we start in farming now. When my father, we start farming because this land old. Yeah, this is my father. He's my father. <laughs> here in our barangay, it's very peaceful. Just like that. Because here we can plant uh, vegetable, rice. Here all, all is free. Yeah, in our place. <laughs> We can raise pigs, we have uh, tilapia, chicken, like that. <laughs> yeah. A stick. A stick, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I have to walk up these hills and it takes a long time. And it's just so hot. But the good side is, on the other side of the hill, get to cruise and bomb the hill. So we're about halfway in between Bogudpud and Luwag. So we're getting close. One thing I noticed about the trip is that people, wherever they are, they love to say hi. They love to greet you. And they're always so interested doing so wherever you go people are so friendly especially here in the Ilocos Norte um, another thing is all I can say is uh, I'm sweating so much and the only way to get past getting dehydrated I have to buy a bottle of water it's about 15 pesos and drink one every 20 minutes or so so that's a lot of water bottles but you get super thirsty. So we're almost there. Let's keep skating. Just passing the Bagui windmills. We just passed them. As you can see, there's gonna be some crazy hills on the backside. Barangay Burgos, and we have some Barangay ice cream. Mm. In Burgos, I felt inspired to stop and buy some dragon fruit. About an hour and a half later, I think it saved my life. It gave me the energy to get back on my feet in this heat to keep going. A couple hours later, I would make it thirsty but alive to Luwag City. One of the greatest things you can learn is the ability to be present, to open your eyes and just simply observe, to be in a moment and nowhere else but right here and right now. 
to notice the color of the sky, the feeling of the warm, subtle morning breeze flow across your face. I looked over the ledge and realized I was actually here. I could hear the birds, the tita washing her clothes, the kids laughing down the street, the tricycles from below, the sizzling sound of itlog frying on a pan, and of course, the sound of umagan kaiganda from the window next door. So this morning, I woke up and my calf was hurting so much, uh, super sore. I think what happened was when I was going downhill to slow down at the end, I had to put my foot down and stop the forward motion. And it basically it caused a lot of uh, stress on my muscles. So it became really sore. Um, but I've been using some uh, turmeric pills and so far they've been pretty good. Normally I'd be pretty sore, like really, really sore, but it's not as bad as I thought. It's a quick recovery. Last night I went to this restaurant, it's called Kam Kamaling, Kamaling, yeah. And I ordered this pork sig sig, which is really good, and a iloko salad. One third of the way of eating, I had to go to pee really bad. So I got up and went to the restroom. And by the time I got back, the girl had taken my food and thought I was done. <laughs> I was kind of bummed because it was really good. And I didn't get to finish my meal. Uh, she felt bad, but I was like, whatever, it's cool. And that was delicious. One of the great things about being in Lawag is everything's so close. Um, I'm here staying at uh, Poe's house. Welcome to Lawag. Beautiful in Lawag. He's the man, it's kind of a cool place. It's a three-story building, not too bad. So I'm gonna get my stuff ready and then we're gonna head out. I need to buy a hat. Um, Cause the sun out here, it's pretty strong. We've been lucky enough to not have it rain yesterday. And so that's kind of been a little blessing. But today, let's hope for the best and let's make it awesome. Most important thing when you're skating is always remember to stretch your legs before you start skating the next day. Stretch as much as you can. Stretch as much as you can and make sure that you get enough protein. And try using some turmeric. It will heal your muscles a lot faster and it will reduce the inflammation, reducing the pain. So, all right, let's get going. I started early in the market, bought some silly, put it in my pocket. Love the smiles of the people as they shop it. I got inspired by the ping of Ram Baton Baton Saboya. Talon Blanca Camatis, that's euphoria. I'm in my way out to the street, weaving in and out of people. Gotta be quick on your feet. Skating through the city's kinda like a game of its own. It's dangerous, it's risky, but it helps to stay in the zone. I already miss this place, but as I was skating through the bridge, I recognized a familiar face. I saw a friend who I met on the road in Clavedia. I saw him again in Pagudput and now here in the Lawag area. So I jumped on his trike on the way to his place. I could take a break, maybe chill and get back on pace. There were so many people just to explore, and when I read his shirt, it made sense even more. I was lucky to get a free snack, take some time just to relax and talk about life. Yes, the people of Luwag are pretty genuine, they open up their homes to the foreign civilian. Ah, and then he showed me his dog, his cat, his bird. As I was skating down the street, a group of guys called me over. They looked curious to what I was doing. They gave me a bowl of bamboo shoots to eat. I was pretty stoked I had a little bag of chilies from the market. It's still in my pocket to put in the bowl to add a little bit of flavor. One of the guys thought I was crazy. He thought it'd be way too spicy and hot to eat. So I offered some to the guy in front of me. He kindly rejected. It was actually pretty good. Cool and refreshing, yet spicy and flavorful on this super hot day. 
They pointed out to where they grow the bamboo, just on the side of their house, and explained that they liked to harvest it whenever it would grow strong. They were just pretty stoked to see someone like me come down the road on a skateboard and eat bamboo at their spot. They are all very laid back and super nice for sure. Plaza del Norte. This way. Plaza del Norte. What's your name? Oh, Felix Santiago. Alright, Felix Santiago. Oh. Salamat, Madame Salamat. So I continued on my way down south with music in my ears. I figured it could be dangerous, but it kept my spirits high. I came across the oldest church in the Ilocos Norte, the Pauai Church, or St. Augustine, completed in 1710 by the Spanish. I journeyed through the dunes of Bawai. As I climbed up, I wondered what I would discover when I got to the top. Would I see for miles, or would I collapse along the way? The sand was hotter than I could imagine, and the wind howled. What I would discover is just another cow staring me down. I didn't even think to check the time. I really had no need, as I was free. No commitments, except to make it to Barok eventually. I came across a stretch of road where I have never seen so much garlic being sold all at once. I actually bought some and put it in my bag. I guess I got the idea I would somehow have an opportunity to cook with it later. I stopped at a place called El Terrible Burgers. <laughs> This guy was confused what I was doing and why I was skating so far. I talked for a bit and it was a nice break. I then finally made it to the small town of Barok where I was greeted by one of the local crews and they were ready to learn how to skate. So these are the roads in the Philippines. They allow me to roll. Shout out to the guys who make it possible. They're really not as bad as they say. I could skate past the rice in the carabao all day. I met this guy who must skate too. Maybe he hasn't done it lately, but would like to. Possibly his job and his lifestyle holds him back from the joy he hasn't felt in a while. This made me think and reflect, recollect when I was young. What the heck? I would skate all day and dream all night about the streets that we play, and that felt all right. Maybe one day I would be a pro, but chase that dream just a little too slow. I moved on, grew on, and passed on that four-wheel vision for a two-year mission. It's nice, nice to reminisce. I can still believe in all those things that I miss, but let me tell you, life is still great because I'm in the Philippines and I'm here to skate. This lady called me over to have some banana queue. It's barbecue banana on a stick. We sat and we talked about the very real severe side effects of speaking too much English. You can get a real bad nosebleed if you speak just too much. <laughs> just then some missionaries showed up. I walked alongside them to see what they were up to. They were cruising the barangays doing service for the people. They leave their homes for two years, learn a language, and share a message of hope and light. I met a couple friends that stopped to say hi. They said they kept seeing me along the road skating by as they're on their journey south. I then met this guy and his friend roasting a whole pig, also known as lechon. He reminded me of this one carnal back in LA. He asked if I could be a pen pal for his son, so I gave him my info, and he gave me a piece of epic lechon. Finally made it to the city of Vigan. I explored the market a bit, and I decided that I needed to buy some new shoes to skate. It all felt so familiar. The old brick streets, 
and the original colonial Spanish buildings give this place a very unique and authentic feel, even amongst all the tourists. I skated in the plaza in the shadows of Jose Rizal, the national hero, before I ended my day in this awesome city. Yep, uh-huh. It's raining pretty hard outside, like crazy. So, today is going to be a long journey. We got to head south to Dagodin, but actually we're going to go somewhere else. Um, what's the place called? Kandong. So, in order to make it, we're going to be skateboarding all the way through the rain. Um, and this is where it gets a little dangerous, slippery and wet. Last night, it's pretty comfortable. This is my place. Hotel Balai, I think it's called. Um, pretty stoked. Basically what happens is I can only bring three shirts, maybe two shorts. Uh, I can't bring a lot of clothes. And so the way that I make it work is I get those little packets of laundry detergent soap and then I, I wash the clothes in a bucket in the shower. Then I hang it next to the AC. And that does a pretty good job at air drying things overnight. Sometimes it might be a little damp in the morning, but for the majority, it gets pretty dry. Um, and I think that's probably the best way to get my clothes clean. Because there's just, when you're carrying a backpack and when you're skateboarding, you do not want stuff. Because more and more miles, more, because over time, you start to feel how heavy your bag is. So to be as minimal as possible, I just cut back on everything. So it just makes it easier. You can still stay clean. You can still stay hygienic. Uh, you just gotta be creative with it. Yesterday, I ate Jollibee. Why? I don't know. I was craving something spicy. Uh, spicy chicken. It was pretty good. All right, so we're gonna get going. Let's go and let's get on the road. Growing up, I always look forward to rainy days. To me, they're always the best time for adventures. They had an element that made it more interesting, more challenging, and more mystical. Leaving Vigan, I knew I had plenty of puddles ahead of me. I wish I could spend more time here, but I knew I had to keep going because it would take longer to get to my next stop, because the rain made it a little bit harder to skate faster on these roads. Sadly, the nut on my truck got loose. Luckily, this guy with his tool helped me out at his little restaurant just by the river. These kind ladies gave me some sixi and rice. They are all so funny and just love to laugh. They thought I was crazy in what I was doing, but they wished me luck as I skated across the old Garino Bridge. This bridge withstood the bombings of World War II and stands today as a symbol of strength for a local sir. Haha, <laughs> I tried to take shelter for a second, but yeah, it didn't work. I got so. As I got close to the beach, I began to notice how good the waves actually were in this spot. They looked really fun. I gazed out into the ocean and thought to myself, just over there beyond the horizon is China. I came across this area of craftsmen and carvers, so I had to check it out. And this guy actually invited me to check out what he was doing. It was pretty unique. All the things they were doing were all done by hand. Carvings, so much talent and skill, time and expertise to make decorative beds that people would buy from all over the zone. He wanted to try my board, so I said, sure. Balo is a Filipino street food. It's basically eating a boiled duck fetus with vinegar and salt. It's pretty good. You gotta try it. Balo. Eat. So. Video live. 
Thank you. <laughs> Next time you're here, you loco sur, get some balad. You'll be happy. Papalons! Wait. Good afternoon. <laughs> After some balut, I skated on. And I came across this guy. I'm not sure who he thought I was, but yeah, give me a thumbs up. And then I smelled something good. Smoke on the side of the road in this neighborhood. Cooking up some fresh pork barbecue and Adidas. Mm. And then the party really got going. Everybody hyped on the moose, kept on flowing. And the chief in the red tank top had some style. Man, he could move. This is one of those rolling moments. I was having so much fun with this new crew. I didn't even get a chance to try some barbecue. So I had to. And I salute you. Not bad. A pretty fly, but I had to get going to my next baranga. I finally made it to the famous city of Kandon. Where I was tired and you could see the golden arches in the distance. Overhead, glowing. Music is a big part of the culture in the Philippines. Different genres, various sounds, create moods and feelings that can lift you up from feeling down. Whether it's karaoke in the evening with your family, or on a Sunday during church in celebration, or relaxing in a courtyard with the guitarra. Either way, it's a way of life and a way to share and unite. And sometimes, that's all you really need, just to get through the day I met these two ladies who were actually pounding pieces of the road away. Chunks of cement, piece by piece. They were so happy and said they would help me skate smoother. That was pretty cool. As I was skating, I noticed a super popular activity. A game that brings joy to many. This game is basketball, winning it, losing it, taking it all. First introduced in 1910, it's come a long way, my friend. The nation just raised the bar for the love of the game that I've seen so far. You hear the household name, LeBron James, and even in a hurry, Stephen Curry. It's kinda obvious you never really stopped this or top this in terms of a sport with popularity and clarity. Given to the streets for the youth, the truth is a remedy, the cultural identity will keep strong and carry on the legacy of the game for eternity. Every court shares its own story. Basketball in the Philippines bring a national glory. came to me that I was just a visitor a guy on this board in this land is a foreigner you need an open mind have some respect go to learn be humble take some time to connect I don't speak the language and really that's all right it's a universal understanding way of life even if you just can't can't comprehend the culture just be a good friend Wherever you go, the kids are always full of wonder. They're always excited and want to be a part of whatever is going on. As adults, let's not forget that for ourselves. Bye guys. Oh my word. Just then I began to see the view, so I climbed down my castle and I drew a straight line through the tunnel right to the beachside lifestyle I could share with you I could feel the coral crunch underneath my shoes The greatest right in life is your choice to choose I'm in a special little place in La Union today I would really just have it no other way I remember hearing from a friend about San Juan La Union and how it was a decent place with waves and how the surf community is actually growing here. When I got there, it made me think of back home on the north shore of Oahu, where spending time in the water is vital and the waves in the winter season caress the shores powerfully. Surfing is something that when you start, 
there's a part of you that will never give it up and it will always be a part of you till the end. I stayed two days here. I arrived during a four foot typhoon swell and spent that day in the water. It was actually really fun. Unfortunately, my camera wasn't working the first day and by day two, it had dropped significantly. So I just watched the people surf. They were loving it. I skated on through the city of San Fernando and my mind and body was refreshed. Just taking one day of rest made a huge difference. When you're skating eight to 10 hours a day under the sun, your body needs a little chill. I think after some time you start to lose weight and your legs become stronger. But if you go too hard, anything can happen. I guess you just need to be aware of your body and stretch as much as you can each morning. Some local kids showed up and we shared some grapes I bought alongside the road. As I skated through a barangay marketplace, some people would stop to look and see who I was. I ran into another crew of tricycle drivers. Some offered me a ride to wherever I was going, but I had to kindly reject. I got caught up in the rain again, but at this point, I didn't even care. I chose to skate right during the rainy season here in Luzon, but it was all part of the adventure. Do you have a brother? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Also for the master of the order and his assistance. I finally made it to Manawag after a long time. Luckily, I met up with some friends from school who lived there, and they let me stay that night and spend time with their family. The next morning, I woke up to the sound of some whimpering. It was a batch of puppies just outside the hut I was sleeping. I wish I could put one in my backpack and take it along. Maybe it could have worked, but maybe not. We decided to go to the main central area of the town so we can get a bite to eat. I rode up to the drive through up a place that I knew that was served some pretty good fast food. It's quite a special place for a lot of people here, a place of celebration, of joy and of tear. I looked into the window and said, Come with stop, can I get a chicken joy? She said, Si, sí, nah. It's kind of classic if you ask me. Thanks for my mercy, I am order 23. Thank you for your kindness, come on, follow me to the next window in the drive through with Jolly Bee. A brand that just keeps growing all around the world A simple philosophy that just never gets old You gotta sell family, gotta sell joy Creating memories, that's genius ploy It was so fun hanging out with my friends who moved back home. I hadn't seen them for a long time and they were down to take me around in their town. So we hung out and I skated a bit by the court next to the main church. This church is famous for Our Lady of Manawa, a statue that holds a lot of value both physically and spiritually for many people. Visitors come from all over to experience it and pay their respects. I really enjoyed my time in Manawa. It's such a cool little place. It was great to see my friends, but I had to be on my way. It was gonna be a long one. So I had to get going. The Philippines is an island nation surrounded by water. There are over 7,000 islands and flooding and monsoons are a real thing. What's sad is over 3,000 people die a year from drowning. It's the second leading cause of death for kids 14 and under. 
This is a real issue. There's no reason kids should not learn how to swim. I believe learning how to swim should be as important as learning how to walk. It should be a part of you, who you are, in order to preserve who you are. When I made it to Tarlac, I met up with some family and friends and was able to see their passion in swimming. We visited the club that they're a part of that teaches these skills to the kids. I felt inspired spending time with them and learning more about how much it means to be able to swim. It is important to learn the skill of swimming because it is one of the basic in which a kid must know water survival and water safety. It is very important. At the same time, Philippines is surrounded by water. It is necessary that all the kids must learn how to swim. Perlock City Waves is unique because we are using a standard system developed by the national swimmer, Coach Susan Papa. At the same time, as you can see, we're just using a 12-meter pool, but we have already produced swimmers who are competing locally and internationally. At the same time, winners in the recent Palarong Pambansa. Interlock seat waves, the kids benefit. Instead of just training for their health, we instill values to the kids to build their character, to be a better person. Instilling these values, they can help the community. Some of these kids are less fortunate. Some are not, but still, in here we are a family. The next day, I left super early. I jumped on the road, and about this time, I could tell that the provinces and the countryside were becoming more and more city-like. I took a stroll at the local Palenque in Angeles and met some cool cats. Sorry, folks. Oh. <laughs> no, I don't use them. <laughs> There's just so much in the open you can buy. Everything is hanging on display. Meat, fish, vegetables, and everything in between. There are these fans that are whipping around really fast to shoo away the flies that might spoil the food. And there were all kinds of smells that approached me as I walked through. It's really a unique experience and a cheap place to buy ingredients. The kind sir shared some lumpia with me outside the palenque before I went around and explored some more. You want to make sure you make it to the market early, as early as you can. That's when the freshest goods are available and ready to be bought. Every country has its own unique market experience. If you're a foreigner, the Philippines is a very unique place. Most Filipinos speak English, at least a bit. That makes it easier to talk to them about the goods on sale and just about life. The level of enthusiasm is always pumping, especially in the morning. And although most people are trying to make a sale, they're always genuine and would just love to have a conversation too. This all made me so happy. So happy. I really loved walking around and checking out the different things in the market. I wish I could buy a lot. Didn't have room. And I probably wouldn't be able to carry it but I had to keep myself going as I skated past and left the City of Angels, AKA Angeles City. I saw this bridge from afar. It was fenced off and falling apart. I hopped the fence and checked it out. Every step I took, I was wondering which one my foot would break a plank and fall right through. Luckily, I was all right. It was kind of nostalgic being up here though. I then came to Malolos, where everything seemed to be so colorful. The streets were vibrant, and I was in the shadows of the famous Jed's Resort. It seemed pretty unique and pretty cool, but I don't think it was open at the time, so I kept going. At this point, I think I pulled a muscle in my right calf. It was pretty sore, and the road was pretty bad. 
I got mud all over my shoes and the ground was too wet and too rough to even skate. So I just walked for a while. This curious family called me over. They wanted to get some pictures with me. They were so genuine. I actually showed some interest in some of the candy they were selling and I offered them some money, but they gave it to me for free. They were so nice. Five hours later, I reached the finish line. At least the welcome committee showed up to congratulate me. To be honest, it was so surreal stepping off my board with my shoes on the pavement, looking around, and just realizing I'm finally in Manila. This place is bustling, the capital, the heart of the country, a metroplex of activity from every direction. You can get lost, the traffic is insane, the movement never stops. Layers of different sound fill the air all around you. Most people say avoid Manila as a tourist, but I see the city itself as a form of art. You can experience it from so many different angles and perspectives. Each way tells its own unique story, and if you're willing to ride that story bumpy or smooth, then really, who knows where you'll end up. I skated along the road, and this is probably some of the most dangerous parts of the whole trip. The ground was wet, slippery, and there were huge cracks. It was getting dark, and every kind of vehicle was surrounding me. Yet, it was kind of fun. Maybe it was the adrenaline still pumping through me. It felt like a challenge. It was like a river, you know? You just need to go with the flow, so the flow will carry you. I still had two miles to go to where I was going to stay for the night. I was super excited to just put my things down, eat some sinigang, and take a shower. After two days of rest and recuperation in Manila, I met up with some friends from Hawaii, and we just checked out the local mall, cruised around, and just chilled. I think my body needed a rest. And that's my story. I'll never forget the moments along the way, the most vibrant land and places I was lucky enough to discover. The trip itself took me 12 days and I covered approximately 403 miles. I lost a total of five pounds, but gained more than I could ever measure. Every day was a journey in itself, a lesson I learned, some obstacle to overcome. But really to sum everything up, the Philippines is truly a beautiful country. And one of the biggest reasons why is the people and their culture. If you have ever dreamed up a great adventure, now is the time to go. The world is waiting for you, but who knows how much longer it's willing to wait. These moments will keep rolling, rolling on to the next adventure. So, I'll see you then.